Here we go. The Dynasty videos are back on the daily. That is my goal going forward. This is the running back ranking video. Top 10 Dynasty running backs. And what you see in front of you is not my Dynasty top 10 running backs. These are the redraft. And I'm going to live without preparing. This is all impromptu. This is all live reaction, live digesting, live decision making in front of your face. I'm going to take the redraft version. This is the redraft version on screen. And we're going to dissect it, manipulate it, twist it up, and turn it into our dynasty top 10 running back rankings. This is redraft. You're watching dynasty. File in. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios, it's the Dynasty Fantasy Football Show. Welcome to the Dynasty Fantasy Football Show. My name is Smitty. You're watching the live, impromptu, not prepared, not scripted uh, Dynasty running back top 10 ranking video. And again, I can't preface enough. You're looking right now at the redraft list that we just cooked up and I, I tweaked it on the live stream on today's live stream this was done last night so this is last night's but I tweaked it and put HN tied with seven with JT and redraft why why you might add <laughs> well um this news broke earlier today uh Devon HN is looking massive compared to last season look how big he is and I don't want to hear one single ridiculous comment like oh he's gonna slow down the most elite speed demon in the national football league even if you slowed him down even a fraction uh, of a mile per hour he's still faster than pretty much anybody in the national football league and he looks like he ate 18 courses of meatloaf per day since the last time he stopped playing football and then decided to work out like a machine those guns Tree trunks on his arm, uh, the neck, the lats, the shoulders. The, the dude is massive. We're talking about night and day. We're talking about probably 10 to 15 pounds minimum. And he played at about 190. So you're talking about a 200 to 205 pound, 5 foot 9 Devon H. Han. That, that no longer puts him. He's Kyron. He's now Kyron Williams. He's not Devon H. Han. Will he stay healthy? Kind of this like change of pace guy that is so good that even as a change of pace guy he's a top six to ten redraft running back he's now a top one to five redraft running back he's now a top one to five one to six dynasty running back and where do i put him on my dynasty rankings well let's not get ahead of ourselves let's go ahead and redrag these around christian mccaffrey no way he's remaining he, he probably is potentially in the top 10. It depends how you build. But we're going to take away that right there. He's not He's not going to be in the mix. Uh, let me get rid of the phone number for now. We'll open the phone lines after I do all this. Uh, B. John Robinson is going to remain number one. I can't envision myself maneuvering this around to any other RB. Of course, we love Brees Hall. Of course, we love Jameer Gibbs. Of course, we love a handful of these guys, but the number one running back in fantasy football dynasty and Zastro dropping a $2 hauler immediately on the live stream. All Super Chats get handled immediately going forward. I'm, that's my vow to you. I, remind me, if I don't see one, let me know, but my vow is to try and do that. Trade away Zamir White for Rasheed Rice um, in dynasty. I don't... I, I, I would rather have Zamir White. I, I think there's a, a great chance that Rasheed Rice falls off the map. Not that he's like destined to never play another snap, but if he does play 2024 in court, out of court, head head case, Alvin Kamara's you know court, you know when he's going through all the drama, he played horribly that season. He's going to be in his own head. He's probably financially battling all this, you know, and the stress involved, and now he's trying to get another contract to pay for it. So he's in his own head. I would stay clear. I think Zamir White's got enough amazing upside that i would rather have white but the only thing i would say is could you flip rice could you um i don't know i don't think anybody's buying i think you'd have to bank on the news getting awfully uh crazy good for you if you were to make that trade i'd rather have samir white 
Uh, maybe I'm alone on that. I know it's redraft, redraft or dynasty. I know dynasty is a little different than redraft in terms of that that long term expectation for Rice versus the okay. What if he doesn't play a single down in 2024? I I would rather have Zamir White. I think Zamir White's in for a big season. Thank you, Zastro for dropping that, my man. Kyron Williams, number two overall. We're going to have to probably move that away. I'm not saying he's not top five. You guys know I love Kyron Williams, but I'm going to move that out of there. Let's take away, and Brees Hall might get that number two spot. Let's take away Brees Hall's number three, and we'll put that up here. We're going to take away uh, Gibbs's number four. We might be giving him a higher number than four. We're going to drag that over here. As you can see, I'm taking away the numbers that I've ranked the redraft guys, and we're going to be handing these out like candy in a minute to the to the different players. So let me move all these away, and we'll come back and re-rank them. Okay, so JT, we'll take that away. JT probably gets an upgrade. Jacobs, uh, Jacobs is tough to value in Dynasty. I mean, he's still young enough. Uh, Ziggy, how old is Josh Jacobs? I almost called him Brandon Jacobs. Ziggy, how old is Josh Jacobs? Josh Jacobs is 26 years old and was born on February 11th. February, so Ziggy off. He just turned 26. So 27, 28, two years left. That makes it tough. So we'll talk about Jacobs in a second. Uh, here are the running backs. Okay, here are the running backs. Number one's Bijan. Without, without hesitation, without equivocation, you're looking at a man that in 2023 was running back nine, even though he was given literally third carry workload around the goal line. He was the third option for Arthur Smith in this um, atrocious decision-making team that was heading up Atlanta last year, making him running back three near the goal line. Cordero Patterson and Tyler, the best goal line running back in the league, said Arthur Smith, Tyler Algier were ahead of him. But from a dynasty perspective, we're looking at a guy that took 1,463 total yards and eight touchdowns on a horrible season volume wise. That's a lot of that, guys. That's a that's a good season. Like at the end of the day, Bijan had 1,463 and eight touchdowns. He had 500 receiving yards almost, and four touchdowns receiving. That's unbelievable when you think about it. Running back nine in in an underutilized, underutilized. Uh, season 2024 1400 rushing yards is what I predict I predict he's gonna have the sum total yardage from last year as a running total 5.2 was very very generous I think he could have 5.5 12 TDs I think that's pretty good 10 to 12 75 receptions instead of uh 58 that's that's very cautious really uh 487 I want up that to 650 it's a little high but I like it I think it's doable Five to six TDs instead of four. Not crazy at all. We're talking about a, a bare minimum 15 touchdown running back. Bare minimum 18 to 1900 total yard player. But real high chance of 2,000 yards. And once he does this, then it's, it's game over. No one's going to get him ever again in this high octane Kirk Cousins led offense with Kyle Pitts rebounding. Drake London being amazing. And, and Kirk Cousins... Look, Kirk Cousins being there is great because the, the team will be good. They'll be in good field position. The new kickoff rules means this guy's living inside the, you know, almost across the 50-yard line every time he gets the football. And he's such a playmaker. I, and that goes for everybody. The whole team is across the 50 quicker. But I just think that some of these playmaker guys like Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Devon H. Chan, they're going to have so many more opportunities now to have these big plays. Um, because you won't be trapped, you know, in the 20 yard line to the goal line area where your play calling changes. Like we're rarely going to see a playmaker like Achan or Bijan game scripted out because of bad field position. Like you're getting the football. You're now getting the football across the 35, 40, 45 yard line. And I, I just think Bijan is, he's, he's, he's young. He's, he's ready to go kind of fresh legs in a way and there's just no stopping him and when you put Kirk Cousins in this offense and then you make it better and you stretch the defense out guess what's going to happen to him everything we saw last year 4.6 a carry goes to 5.2 minimum yardage everything just gets bigger better stronger 
8.4 yards per reception goes above 10. This is one of the best receiving backs, if not the best receiving back in the National Football League. And this Kirk Cousins spread out attack is going to make him not a focal point of defenses on any sort of regular basis. And that's going to lead to an explosion. Everything we thought we'd see last year, we're going to see this year. And he's absolutely my number one overall running back, Dynasty Smitty Approved. Just been Smitty approved. Almost a guarantee for a 2,000 total yard season, right? Number two overall in Dynasty running back rankings is going to be Brees Hall. I want to make it Gibbs. Gibbs is going to be my number three. I'll just go ahead and put that out of the way. Uh, I, lo I, lo I love Gibbs in, in Hall. You could almost make this a tie, to be frank. It, it really is that close between these two. Um, the only thing that makes me say Hall is that you know, you have a approved offensive line. You have Aaron Rodgers. He should play two more years. Um, so, you know, I'm not too worried about it. Not to mention we saw what Hall could do in this offense if it didn't have a quarterback. Um, Monty's still present here. Not going away, but certainly not going to hamper him. But I feel like he's a little bit more guaranteed volume. And his receiving numbers and... Games can't get game scripted out. Not that he can, but I just feel like there's just a touch more appeal right here than there is right here, but they're both top three. Like, you know, what am I saying here? Oh, I, I love this guy, and I love this guy almost as much. It's like a neck-and-neck -neck finish in a race, and, and, and Brees Hall's just got a little bit longer neck, <laughs> and he just sticks it out there, and, and it's bar barely, barely. Both these guys... Could be 2,000 total yard players as well. We could have one, two, three. With the new rule, shorter field. I know you say you're taking away yardage. How do you expect more stats? Because teams will be back on the field quicker. Like everybody's scoring more points. Everybody's back on the field. Defensive, you know, production is going to be down. Like defenses are going to look worse on paper probably because of these kickoff rules, I'd imagine. There's going to be more scoring. There's going to be less opportunity to pin a team down in the 20 and then figure out a way to get to give the punt a, a horrible punt and get better field position. Like I just think it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty easy for these playmakers to make massive plays. And then that brings us to Dynasty running back number four. And I don't care what anybody says about Kyron being injury prone or maybe he doesn't uh he can't stay healthy smitty i don't like kyron williams in this situation i really think that you're you're making a mistake by banking on him he's very injury prone i disagree i couldn't disagree more i absolutely love kyron williams i think anybody that thinks kyron williams is gonna disappoint on any sort of long-term uh, output level is gonna be looking like a fool by the end of of the season I think this guy's on a mission to prove people wrong. He's on a mission to to become one of the most dynamic, uh, underrated running backs in the National Football League, and I'm here for it. I'm excited for it. I can't wait for people to continue to doubt him. I can't wait for people to say, hey, Kyron is, is not a guy that's going to hold up. The draft capital is low. Watch them bring a rookie in. This rookie running back class is no threat to him. They could draft any one of the top rookies and they don't unseat Kyron. I'm not even scared. I don't want it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants the potential like injury happens and then Braylon Allen steps in and then and then you have a running back by committee potentially like no one wants the threat of that but no one's unseating him no one's taking the job from him he's working out like a monster his draft capital concerns and dynasty from the excel sheet Eric's that say he doesn't have good draft capital so I just don't think they're going to rely on him long term that is a, a dumb way to look at it when a player is already proven and he's beloved by his coach McVay loves him. McVay, McVay loves him. And you might say he might run him into the ground. He's ready for it. It's going to take him years to be run into the ground. Um, Kyron Williams, in my estimation, leads the league in rushing yards in 2024. Leads the league in rushing touchdowns in 2024. When you look at what he did last season, this man scored 16 or 15 total touchdowns. If you extrapolate his 12 games played, in his 15 total touchdowns, you get 21 total touchdowns. If you extrapolate his 12 games to 17, you get 16-20 rushing, 
45 receptions, 291, running back two overall, 357 fantasy points, and behind only Christian McCaffrey by less than 28, 29 points, something around that territory. This is by far and away heads and shoulders your running back two last year had he played 17 games. And even if you don't want to play a extrapolation game, then I don't care because his numbers still scream monster. 12 games played, 12 rushing touchdowns. He scores a rushing touchdown on average every single week. Not almost, he does. That means that if there's a player and my life is on the line... I would bet that Kyron would be the guy that scored a touchdown if I needed to make that bet. That's me. I don't recommend that for anybody else. That's just a pure speculation on my part. I, I'm neither a doctor nor a lawyer. I've stayed at a Holiday Inn once or twice, the Disneyland Hotel a couple times. That's it. That's all I bring to the table. But if my life was on the line and I needed a touchdown, I would call Kyron and say, Kyron, Get me a score, young man. And while you're at it, can you give me 100 yards? I also have you in my fantasy league. Thank you very much, Kyron. Appreciate you, Kyron to the moon. Ky Kyron to Saturn. Both these guys are Saturn men. The Saturn men. One small step for Both man. are Saturn men. One giant leap for Saturn. So is Bijan, obviously. All three. Look at this little... Space man. Look at this little upside-down L. Upside-down L for winning. That's how you reverse that. <laughs> it's not an L. It's an upside down L. The reverse, the inverse of an L. Um, one, two, three, four. Who's number five? Is it Barkley? He's older. So I'm going to say no. Is it JT? Ziggy, how old is JT? Oh, <laughs> he's not going to know who JT is. <laughs> JT by James Taylor was James Taylor years ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking he's going to know what I'm talking about <laughs> Ziggy how old is Jonathan Taylor Jonathan Taylor is 25 years old and was born on January 19th 1999 that's not the right oh, that, yeah they got it okay yeah uh, Jonathan Taylor 25 born on January so yeah I mean look he'll play 26 play 27 20 that's three years I'm going to go, I'm going to move all these down. I'm going to get rid of Christian McCaffrey because, no offense McCaffrey, but you're getting older and you're you're on the Dynasty channel now. You don't deserve an image. We're going to throw Devon Achan's image up here because he deserves to have his face up here. When we're talking about these top five guys, I want everybody's face to be present and accounted for. Um, I'm going to say Achan's my number five. And it, it, to be honest with you, it's not really close. And if you need a, a reminder of how he's going to stay healthy this season, <laughs> let me show you exhibit number one. <laughs> Devon A. Chan is now Kyron Williams in terms of size. He went from skinny, scrawny kid that you wouldn't believe was in the NFL if he told you. You'd say, uh, yeah, sure, whatever, kid. Uh, what high school do you go to? And then now all of a sudden you'd see this guy walking the streets and go, yes, sir, what can I get you, sir? Can I get you coffee, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. Please leave me alone. This guy would absolutely smash you to pieces. And might I mention, did you know by looking at this man on the right, looks like a, a bodybuilder, did you know he's actually probably the fastest man in the National Football League at that, even with the gained weight? A-Chan, to me, is the easy number five overall. You can laugh, you can disagree. I really don't care. That's how I feel. That's how Dad did it. That's how America does it. It's worked out pretty good so far. And my number six overall. Oh, and if you need more information on Devon Achan, let's go to the Devon Achan card and take a look at what this guy's been up to since he entered the league last year. Oh, look, 2023, running back 24. Not good no numbers, Smitty. That's not very good. I don't know if I like that. Missed a lot of time. In, in a season where he didn't get enough volume at all, he missed time and wasn't unleashed until later. How do you still have 11 touchdowns? The man had 11 touchdowns during a running back 24 season. You might not see the, the irony there or the ability to decipher great hidden in a bunch of weeds, right? There's a bunch of weeds in a, a treasure box. You open it up and it shows Devon Achan's picture. That's what's hiding in the weeds here. Running back 24, 
800 yards, eight touchdowns, 7.8 yards per carry, essentially the number one running back in NFL history in yards per carry. You're watching maybe the birth of the number one running back in the history of the NFL, and I don't think it's going to change. I think it's going to stay the same. I don't know that he gets 7.8 totally. I don't really know. I can't tell you that he's going to keep his yards per carry up, but this guy could be, the, especially as you go into bigger amounts of qualifying carries for that stat where you say, okay, what about for running backs that have over 600 carries on their career, 500 carries, like you start going into those different territories and that number is going to drop. You're not going to have 7.8, but if you go over 100 carries, you go over, then you're going to be able to capture, capture that. You can cherry pick a little bit. Let's be quite frank. I believe that at the end of the day, you get into a, whatever carry total you want, 200, 500, 600 carries, whatever, this will be the league historical leader in the NFL in yards per carry, even if it goes to 6.1, whatever it is. I don't even know what the, his, the historical number is for Jamal Charles. He has to be one of the top three uh, overall. But this is a guy that's averaging well over five and a half carries every time he touches the football. My 2024 projection, if he can get eight touchdowns running, three receiving, 11 total on a horribly unpredictable season with a, a sum total of 800 and 197, essentially a thousand, a two, a thousand yard season with, with 11 touchdowns. I think 1,100 rushing. So more than what he got, some total here, he'll get rushing. And he'll get 425 instead of 197, four to six receiving TDs, 10 rushing touchdowns. You're talking about a 1,500 plus total yards, total yard season with about 14 to 16 touchdowns and 55 receptions. This right here is a monster in the making. And the news today couldn't have come at a more beautiful time because we're being told and shown that this man has ate a lot of meatloaf over the course of the offseason. Mom's been feeding him meatloaf. He's been eating his Wheaties. He's been working out like a bandit. And he's ready to take the NFL by storm in a whole new way. And the added weight will help him absorb and stay healthy. He'll be hitting people instead of people hitting him. And the fact that he held up so well honestly last year on a smaller frame is more impressive than he got hit in the knee and had a knee injury that any one of us would have had. Then he returned from the knee injury. Somebody did a suplex on the knee and he got re-injured and left for another game or two or whatever it was. And everybody said, see, he's too injury prone. That was a knee. It wasn't getting banged around and 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 just totally just blasted the pieces because he's so small. It was a knee injury. You can't use a knee injury to talk about how small the guy is. Like Tank Dell, you know, breaking his fibula. You can't say if Tank Dell is too small. He wouldn't have broke his leg. Had Like these are freak injuries. So the added weight, dude's going to the moon. And that makes him my easy number five. So one is Bijan, two is Brees Hall, three is Jameer Gibbs, four is Kyron Williams, five is Devon Achan, six is JT, because he's got about the three years left. Saquon Barkley is tougher because, man, I think this is where we, this is where we say throw age to the wind because we're. It's not like we're dealing with, you know, anymore at this point a lot of young up and coming running backs we're talking about you kind of got to take a guy that, that has not as much time left and just take your best bet at two three years barkley seven uh number eight would be i believe jacobs number nine we're going to put christian mccaffrey because even if he has just one year left it's league winning potentially but i don't know that henry's even on this board anymore I think ETN deserves to be here. Rashad White deserves to be here. Kenneth Walker deserves to potentially be right here at this at this stage of, of things. Uh, Jonathan Brooks can enter the conversation. Braylon Allen, depending on what rookie goes to Dallas. Uh, Jalen Wright, if he went to Dallas. Zamir White's a, a fun topic here, but not somebody that you would draft here. Just like, hey, do you see a world, Smitty, where Zamir White could, in hindsight, climb here? Sure, but he's so far down. Rashad White, 
so it re really it comes down to Rashad White. Let me let me put him on here because I don't want to hear uh, everybody get upset. Let me see. Let me get rid of CMC's face. If you CMC, get out of here. What are you doing? You guys trying to take over the show. You're, you're you're an old man on the Dynasty Channel. Calm down. This is Rashad White. Rashad White, Jonathan Brooks, um, Jonathan Brooks is the best rookie running back prospect, I'll put Brooks right here, kind of like that it's broken up like that because now I could fit him in there, that's fine, Brooks, Rashad White, let me at least change the color of Brooks so we have a little bit of, of contrast there, so Brooks, ETN, Rashad White, uh, Pacheco, I don't know, Pacheco runs so hard, I'm going to leave him out of the top 10 conversation and say he's in the 11-12. These guys are kind of tied for 10. Um, Stevenson, uh, he's kind of like Zamir White, he's out. Walker, I think it's just Walker. Walker, uh, and that's it. I, I don't know that anybody else other than a rookie, if they get the job and we have a landing spot that can kind of confirm why they're so good. Uh, I'm going to go to the chat and see if I missed anybody. Because I very well may have. Because I'm spitballing this bad boy. This would be my 10. Right here. This would be my 10. They're all tied. Okay. Walker, White, Brooks, ETN. Um, who am I missing? Anybody feel like I'm missing anybody in, in, in like erroneous, you know, not just, oh, I kind of, Smitty, you should put Najee Harris here. He's not, he's arguable, but he's not in my top 10. Hey, Smitty, you should put Zach Moss here. He's going to, it's arguable, not erroneous. Is there an erroneous, miscalculated error right here? Uh, Brooks should be ready for week one at a small, like smaller capacity, like ease him in. I, don't, I think I'm good. I think it's Walker. I got Walker. It's really a rookie running back. You could say rookie. We could even turn Brooks into a rookie. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could even say uh, this is a rookie. So, rookie, ETN, White, Walker. Henry. And Dynasty, I, I, I would say this is competition for number 10 overall. I could get behind Henry being in a big fat tie for 11 or 12 or 13, but I'm not putting him in my top 10, bro. Not in the conversation. Henry's not in the top 10 conversation. John says Mixon, not a chance, bro. Henry and Mixon, not a not a not a chance in hell. Henry or Mixon touch my top 10 running back conversation. I'm glad you're bringing him up though, because then we can talk about you know why. And John or or anybody can call in. James Cook. No way in hell James Cook's touching my top 10 running back uh, rankings. They're just not. They can be in that like 12 to 15 conversation, but this is like who's number 10. And these guys all have arguments to be in the top 10. These uh, the Mixon, he's too old. He'll, he's already shown he's dropping off. Like he has no chance of being in my top 10 running back. Zero. I'd take two. I would take the second rookie running back before I'd take Mixon. Um, do I really think CMC's number nine? Matt, what do you mean, though? Like, do you think it's too high or too low? Because, like, to be honest with you, Matt, my answer is yes, because, and it's debatable for sure, but I don't even know what side you're on. The, 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 this is too high or too low side. That's how confusing McCaffrey's dynasty value is. These are my rankings. One, Bijan. Two, Brees Hall. Three, Jameer Gibbs. Four, Kyron Williams. Five, Devon H. Chan. Running back, Dynasty 2024. Startup. Six is JT. Seven's Barkley. Eight, Jacobs. Nine, C CMC. And a tie for 10 is Walker, Rashad White, a rookie running back, probably Bre uh, Brooks or Braylon Allen or whoever goes to Dallas. And then ETN. That's it. Pacheco, long term, he's in the conversation at the next pick, but not at not in the top ten. He runs too hard. Casey's kind of unpredictable. Uh, yeah, he's getting into his in his uh, into his groove. But so Matt Matt says you really think CMC's nine? 
And then I asked him, well, what, what do you think he's, he shouldn't be that high? Because I, I kind of thought maybe that's what Matt was saying. He's not in the top 10, Smitty. He's too old. Matt says he's too low. In Dynasty, um, I'm not, I, I don't, I, I don't, like, I'm not ridiculing the ranking, but I'd love for you to call in and debate it. I just want to hear it. Like, it's not like you're wrong. No one's wrong. This is subjective at this point, but I want to hear it. So call into the show, Matt, and let's discuss why you have, and you might have a great reason. You might convince me to move him to eight. Who knows? But call in and argue, CMC, why I have him too low at nine, below Jacobs and Barkley and JT and Achan and Kyron. I'd love to know the thinking. Dial into the Grindhouse phone lines. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. Dial in to the Grindhouse phone lines, ladies and gentlemen. Do it live. Appreciate you. Let me put this little dot com here so you guys know how to find our sponsor, Grindhouse. And I got some exciting news coming out about Grindhouse really, really soon. So hang tight on that one. Um, Theo's calling. Theo, Theo, my guy, you're live on the Fantasy Football Show. What can I assist you with? Uh, Michael Zastro real quickly said, trade away Zamir White for Rashid. Oh, I already got to that one. Thank you, Zastro, for that super chat. Go ahead, Theo. What can I do for you? Yeah, I'm just wondering um, what running backs you love for 2025. Because um, that class is loaded. It's like a bunch of guys I love. I think we got to wait. I mean, I, I, there, like you said, there's so many of them, bro. I don't, I'm not saying I don't create a video on this with tremendous research, but it, it's hard to have this conversation when out when we don't have, you know, uh, even the season played yet. It's not that I don't have, yeah. uh, not that I don't have these conversations or videos, but like I said, it put, I have to put so much tremendous research into this to be responsible, but like Henderson is probably going to be, I would imagine, my consensus, you know, without hesitation, number one running back. Um, I know a lot of people might like Edwards. How's he going to look? What's there's there's so there's so many there's so many RBs. Um, but Henderson by far in a way. But what if he gets hurt? Like you know, different things can can change that. But Henderson would have been the number one running back in this draft class if he if he had. You know, if he had been available to draft right now, he would be the number one. If he was, if he was sitting in this this rookie running back twenty twenty four free agent pool, he would be the number one running back. Not to mention, he might be borderline first round worthy to teams. So he would definitely land with one of the best teams in the National Football League. Why? Because other than Gibbs and uh, and Bijan, which I don't think are anomalies till the end of time, I think we will have, and, and Henderson could be one of them where he climbs into the top 10 overall. Look, Bijan and Gibbs changed the game. Like, you can pretend like running backs just reverted back and no one will ever respect them again, but we just witnessed two running backs go as high as we've seen in a long, long time. Both went top 10. Both of them went top 10. No one talks about that anymore. No one, no one even mm -hmm. remembers that two running backs went top 10. And and so, oh. and so I hold on, Hefke, we're you, you're you're next, right? Um, so yeah, no if, if let's say Henderson was available in this draft right now, anyway, he could climb higher. Right now, he would go at the tail end of round one or top of round two, and look at the teams that are here, like Baltimore would have considered you know taking him instead of signing Henry. Buffalo would look at him. Uh, KC would look at him. He'd be in a good spot. Dallas would take him at 24 if he was if he was the top clear running back. So you know we'll 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 see what happens. But to answer your question, Henderson, and then the rest is TBA, bro. Have you watched any film on Ashton Gentry? Uh, a, a little bit, bro. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think he's like the next uh, MJD, Murray Jones, Drew. Yeah, that's what he reminds me of. Um, hold on, hold on. Yeah. yeah, hold on one second. Let me go over to, uh, is it, he how do I say it? Is it Hef, Hefke? 
You got it, Hefke. Hefke. Hef- yeah, what, you got it. What's up, Hefke? Where are you calling from, by the way? Um, I got from Wisconsin, actually. Wisconsin. What's up? What can we do for you? Not much. I was just talking about yeah, the CMC. You know, I just was kind of thinking maybe you, know, you got uh, Barkley at number seven, but I'm thinking you know they're both the same age. I think CMC would probably should be at least swap them guys out. Um. You know, trade places. No, but Bar- Barkley's tw- Barkley just turned twenty-seven, my guy. Oh, he, he, did he? He, yeah, he's playing. He's a year younger. He's playing his twenty-seven-year-old season. He just turned twenty-seven. Oh. Barkley, or, or CMC, is uh, playing his twenty-eight-year-old season. So you're wrong on that. Oh, okay. Got gotcha. I, that's I a big deal. Both just no, that's a big yeah, deal. In I mean, it makes a big difference. Yeah. I mean, they're they're the same exact age as of this moment in time. You're correct, but but McCaffrey's right. about to turn 28 years old in June, so he'll 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 be 28. It's a big difference. Plus, um, you know that one year is significant. Like if if Christian McCaffrey, if we're giving him enough potential lingering ability in Dynasty, and I don't think he's got a shot really at being elite for two more years. I think he has a shot, a pretty decent shot. But not not enough to even be my number one redraft running back. It's still a concern at 28. 28 is the drop off age. He could be the one that that there's very rare amount of running backs that can play elite at 28. Uh, uh, Eckler couldn't do it. Aaron Jones couldn't do it. Um, you know, Mixon. I don't think. Uh, you know, he, he he's another one. Eric Mixon's twenty. Is he twenty nine or is he turning twenty eight this season? I think. Yeah, I'm not Joe, a fan of Mixon. I'm yeah, not Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon is <laughs> yeah. turning twenty eight. So t- he's turning twenty eight. So Joe Mixon's a complete avoid for me. That's why that earlier comment of Mixon in here. No way. This is his twenty eight year old season. This is Joe Mixon's drop off year. Eckler's Eckler's twenty eight season fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So yeah, CMC CMC at twenty eight. No, thank you. But but I think this is still respectable. But Barkley's got two years left. And McCaffrey won. Okay, that's you know I do like Jacobs. I mean I'm a homer. I'm glad the Packers got him now. So I do like Jacobs. I think yeah. he's gonna have a good year this year. Yeah, I mean how could you not like Jacobs? I mean he's he's in in an unbelievable spot. Unbelievable. Like he's going to get good field position. He's going to get open running rushing lanes. He's going to get the ball. He's going to yeah. get passes thrown to him like crazy. He's going to be happy. He hasn't been very happy for a while. I mean, he's going to be going into no. a Green Bay. I mean, what a fan base too. What a fan base. Uh, and he he's he's a cold. He's uh, capable of running in the cold and grinding it out. But you know, like in this, like this is going to be perfect for him. Uh, he he's ideal. Right, yeah. he's ideal. A big, he's a big boy. He can pwn the pwn the rock. Yeah, you know? he can. Give give him the football and the cold wet. Like, geez, man, it's gonna be amazing. He'll be one of those running backs that I think yeah. plays better as the as the uh, season moves along. To as long as he stays healthy, he'll be getting you know more and more carries and and uh, yards per carry. So it's gonna be a, a pretty right. nice, pretty nice. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, if, while I got you on the line too, then. Um, you know, as far as the top receivers go, you know, with Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, who do you like the best out of those guys? Yeah, in Dynasty, I'd probably say um, uh, JJ's tough because, I mean, you can say, oh, he's Matt, he's you know quarterback. Pro- he's not quarterback proof. He he's he's still going to do well, but there's a reason Justin Jefferson is going number. Six, seven overall instead of one or two or three, you know. And Jamar Chase right. is getting yeah, drafted know, ahead of him. Of the ball. I will say, so. CD Lamb doesn't climb above him though because he might lose Dak Prescott, and who the hell knows what his offense looks like a year from from today. So I'd probably say Jamar Chase given Burrow, but there's there's a real world where I'm kind of liking Marvin Harrison Jr. even as my my wide receiver one, but. In a cost of entry sense, I would like to like get something, you know, like trade if I can JJ for MHJ or the one point one, and then get something else to build my team up and quietly have MHJ mm-hmm. highest. You know what I mean? You can't really rank MHJ yeah. number one, but like if you're crafty and you're a risk taker and you feel like you've looked at this thing left and right, and you just see Kyler Murray Cardinals, they're doing something, 
that 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 nice connection of the two. You hope it happens. Uh, if not, he probably goes somewhere great still. But uh, I like it. I, I like the idea of MHJ and something else instead of Chase or JJ or Lamb. To be frank. Okay. But that's my approach. So, yeah, I, I know this is the dynasty show too. Though. I mean, as far as like say uh, the best ball side of it, I know you're going to try to start working that stuff out and have more content on that. I was listening to your podcast earlier. Um, what did you, can I ask you what, who you think receivers that way goes? Uh, I mean, probably go chase and read and read lamb or chase and redraft. I, I lean, I yeah. lean, I lean Jamar chase, but I like both of them. And JJ's, you know, he's third or fourth Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill could be one. Uh, there's definitely an argument there. I think at the end of the day, in best ball, we don't play one best ball draft. So if you're asking me a best ball question, we're playing hundreds or at the very least, even a casual best ball player is going to play like a dozen, 5, 10, 20. Right. Well, yeah. And so my answer to you is draft Hill, draft Lamb, draft Chase, draft JJ. Have a nice kind of combination of them. And neither one of them should dominate all your drafts. You should try and just equally get a mix of them. I know it's a very vague right. answer, but the, in best ball, that's the best advice I have for you. There is no real yeah. clear wide receiver one. There's just if I was in a pinch, I'd probably say I'd probably say Tyreek Hill in a pinch for redraft best ball. But I want all all of them equally. Okay, that, that's kind of what I was leaning towards too. I know it was not you got to diversify, so yeah. I know that too. So you don't all right. want to just put all your eggs in one basket. All right, Hefke, back to all Dynasty because right. this is Dynasty Channel. Which one of these running backs yeah. do you like the most? Where I have them ranked, and which one do you not like the most? You've, well, you've already said that you didn't like Christian McCaffrey being that low, but you kind of yeah, you maybe I, feel differently now. I, but I like, I like you, your top five. I think your top five is pretty spot on. So okay, I, like I just thought yeah, CMC. You know, you could kind of swap them out with uh, Barkley. That that was the only thing I was kind of looking at. All right, all right. Because I mean, to... he's a beast. You know what that? He, he gets a lot of perception. So. All right, Hefke, appreciate you. Later, bro. Oh, okay, yeah, take care. Theo, anything else, bro? No. Um, yeah, you know, HN's my my favorite running back, so I'm, I'm glad you're having him at five. That's where I have him. Um, you you talking about? I think the, he's gonna. You talking about? You talking about HN? You talking about his his like arch nemesis on the right side, which is the. HN 2.0. <laughs> Look at this monster. <laughs> Look at him. He's unrecognizable to a degree. Yeah. I mean, God. It, it's going to be a B. It looks like he can't. I mean, I bet you anything. I know for a, for a fact this is true. If I ever, ever get to, to interview him this year and bring him on the show, I swear to you, I'm, I'm going to try and ask this question if I remember. I'm going to ask him this. I'm going to say, answer this honestly. You run into walls now, don't you? And and I guarantee you, he'd say, actually, I do. And the re the reason I know that is because <laughs> when you gain that amount of weight, when you're a slender like stick figure, and I was all through high school, I was a skinny twig. And when I got to college, I started lifting and eating boxes of pizza. And when you're 18, 19 years old, and you eat a uh, extra large pizza every night and lift, you just get like massively strong. You're not fat. Like, you, especially when you're a twig, mm -hmm. and I, I was during a track my whole, I've, I've run like four to eight miles a day from like fourth grade until I got into college at 18 years old. So I went to college, stopped running. A, I was playing basketball and running like, you know, occasionally. So I was staying in shape. I was playing football, you know, flag football, intramural football. I was constantly doing sports, but I stopped like running four to eight miles a day. I ate like large pizzas and lifted. I got ma I got massive. I was like I, I, I got I got probably I was about two thirty five and I was about one. I think I was one sixty five in high school. I, I was like it looked like a chan. I was six foot wow. two, one sixty five, <laughs> and I I was just That's running crazy. constantly. I went from one sixty five to two thirty five in one year. It looked like I was on roids, and all I was doing was just lifting and eating just boxes of pizza. My dad loaded up my my uh, college card. 
with like, you know, $200 back then it would get you a lot like $250 a semester on this. And, you know, and I just buy like like nine ninety nine pizza and I'd just eat a large pizza lift. And I remember I'd be walking and I'd run into walls left and right because I was so used to like, you know, why, why would you make a, a wide turn through a hallway when you could just, you know, make as short a turn as you could. But when you start getting growing this way, you don't rem you don't calculate it right. And so I'd be like, boom, and I'd run right into a wall. <laughs> and I'd constantly run into walls. <laughs> and I guarantee you this guy's having problems navigating around rooms and going through hallways. Because he's like double the size. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. Ugh. <sighs> Hey, Chan, his arch nemesis older brother. Yeah. He can be used anywhere on the field now. Yeah. Uh, now now he becomes a guy where I probably don't say this anymore. The line of, um, we don't want him to get 250 carries. <laughs> now it's like, Mostert, you know, God forbid, not wishing injury upon anybody. But if Mostert does decide to maybe take a little break, you know, from for his mind, mindset, you know, maybe he needs a day off or whatever, and he just like kind of retires early, or gets abducted by aliens safely and returned later. Like I'm okay with it right away. It doesn't. I'm not. I'm no longer worried. And I think Mike McDaniel's the kind of guy that's gonna see this and talk about it a lot in a press conference. Like mark my words, a couple weeks we're gonna see something where he goes, "Did you see him? I barely recognize him. Um, we're gonna have to open up a second cafeteria for him." Or, you know, he's going to make some Mike McDaniel dad joke. And that's coming. Mike McDaniel's going to love this guy. He's going to get fed. He's going to get fed. And and really, the two winners of the offseason are not anybody other than Devon Achan and Kyron Williams. Because the running back room yeah, was so. not occupied by a Barkley, a Jacobs, a Henry. And the, the running back rookie pool is weak as hell. So these guys have yeah, zero no, threat. I was really glad when Mustard got got resigned. I'm not even a, a Dolphins fan. I'm a Seahawks fan, but I think it's good for HN that Mustard's back. Yeah. All right, Broski. I mean, maybe maybe not now, but it it was before it was before when he couldn't handle all the touches. Yeah. All right, Broski. All right. Appreciate you. you. Later, Theo. Yeah, yeah. H Chan to the moon. Rockout says um H Chan is a pit bull. Pit bull, bulldog, I don't know which one, but he's one of the two. Guy's running into walls left and right. I'm telling you he's going around a corner going, boom! Oh my god, I didn't realize I was I needed that much more clearance now. <laughs> it sad part is that I've run into walls the last like couple of like last year. Cause I, I, you know, I feel like I'll put on a, a little bit and I, I was getting used to timing those walls just nice and tight around the house, you know, and now I'm like, oh, but this time it's not like, yeah, you know, I'm so, I'm so buff now I'm hitting walls, bro. Now I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting fat. <laughs> I hit a wall and now it hurts. <laughs> it's like that, that meme where it's like kids in the eighties, like, boom. What the hell? And then they go to kids in the in the 2000s and they're like, boom. Ah! <laughs> cry baby. Cry baby generation. Uh, become a chore. Oh, let's see. Not going to lie, though. I don't miss the days of eating peanut butter in a jar between classes. Yeah. I miss the good old days. But, hey, the good old days can become these days gotta appreciate what's in front of you but yeah i do i do reminisce a little bit aj brown yes only one of them who are we talking about there what are we talking about all right any other calls um dynasty channel show we're probably wrapping up here appreciate everybody in the building thank you rock out for your super chat uh thank you also to michael zastro with the super chat thank you to those that have called in um this has been a good 48 hour show Nice little dynasty show. I think it's probably the best dynasty show we've done this year. I think the redraft running back ranking video and then the dynasty running back video have been, in my opinion, the two most valuable shows yet. I mean, today's today's uh, two and a half hour news show on the main channel was was pretty damn good, I might add, which is uh, right here, youtube.com slash the fantasy football show link in the bio. 
Um, don't forget to get on over to Underdog Fantasy. Link is also our link in the bio, link in the description. Link's also in the description for Underdog Fantasy. Uh, promo code Smitty. We'll be doing drafts on the main channel in the evening very, very often. So get ready for that. Um, HN like a Doberman or a Dalmatian. Maybe Rockout says uh, Stewie on juice. You remember uh, Jonathan Stewart? That guy was good. Thank you, peanut butter and jelly. We'll see you later. All right, guys. Until next time, please punch that thumb up button on the way out the door. Thank you for participating and tell a friend about the Dynasty channel, please. Let's grow this bad boy. Appreciate you all. Don't forget to watch the um, earlier 8 p.m. show on the main channel. Again, link in description. We had a really good news show. See you all later. Lower them down, boys. Keep it coming. Perfect. Set them right, right there. Right there. Hey, Chan. Hey, Chan is the man. His haters call him small, but he is nine feet tall. Hey, Chan. this song in a while it's so fitting now it's <laughs> i was trying to take a sip <coughs> i was trying to take a sip and i i forgot that i hadn't heard that song play all the way through in a while it is so fitting now it's beautiful hey chan A-Chan is the man. One QB 12-man league. Who is your dream player at 2.1? His haters call him small. Kyron. But he's nine feet tall. Kyron Gibbs, A-Chan. A-Chan. Thanks, Sick Nasty. Point one is right. That's my favorite. A Kyron H. Gibbs at two point one is ideal. Thanks, sick nasty. See you all later. A